we wanted to talk about the implications of any tax changes seem to be a, a potential part of the fiscal packages that the Biden administration has rolled out so far. So let's just start it by um, kind of asking you how you're thinking about what is likely to get passed and then what impact that could have uh, on the corporate profit side. Obviously, we saw such a boon back in 2017 and, and how you've thought about that to date. Well, our base case has been that there wouldn't be any kind of corporate tax change this year. That, that's a suspect given the new infrastructure proposal, but I just read on Bloomberg that um, that there's a possibility they're going to split up the infrastructure bill to get uh, GOP support. It's so early in the process to try and make an investment decision on what's going to happen with corporate taxes. Is it going to go to, from 21 to 28? Is it going to go to 25 on a compromise? I think is it's just inappropriate to make that kind of call right now. But ultimately, even if you do get a 28% corporate tax hike, it's really not as meaningful, I think, as people fear. Okay, which I'm I'm loving you saying this, Tony, because this is this is the side of the debate I've been taking um, with Brian over the past several weeks. Here, why isn't it problematic? I mean, on paper, if there's a lot of ifs involved here, involved here. To your point, if it gets done, if it's a 28 percent, which doesn't look terribly likely, but even if it was that quote unquote worst case scenario. What would that effectively mean for companies? It would it would mean about uh, so I I wish I was smart enough to figure it out and I'm not so I went to Refinitiv and my earnings wizards over at Refinitiv went company by company and what we did is we took because 28 percent is a split between where it is now and where it was uh, prior to the Trump tax cuts so I think it's important that people remember that companies manage their tax exposure it's not like it goes to 28 percent and everybody's at 28 percent. So what happens is you, you look at the two years before the Trump tax cuts and the two years after the Trump tax cuts. It gives you a good idea of what, um, and, and we took the, the median of those four years for each company, again, with the help of Refinitiv. And we came out with a 1.3% increase in, in uh, or decrease in corporate profits this year, if it were to go to 28%, Julie, and then it would be about 1.9% next year. But Again, the reason that that's not as important is what we always forget. Corporate bond yields have are, are near record lows, which means that you're in a corporate refinance debt cycle, which means they're saving on their interest expense. You're saving more on an interest expense basis than you are getting hit by that increase in corporate taxes. And uh, there's also, of course, there was the report out Friday, which also got a little bit lost in the shuffle, the jobs report that... Uh, 55 of America's largest companies didn't pay any taxes last year. So there's that to throw into the equation, too. They met, Some of them manage their tax exposure by not paying taxes. So I guess that's a fact, too. It, but uh, <laughs> go ahead, the, Tony. The problem is we get, it, we, get in, we get into what's right and wrong, right? This isn't a right and wrong game in a, in a, in, in a social game. It, and again, this is totally social stuff aside. Is it... I don't, my job isn't to figure out if what they're doing is right or wrong. I'll leave that to the politicians. My job is to take what they do and then apply it to macroeconomic analysis and then on what it means to the market. So whether 55 do or don't report taxes, I can't figure that out. It's not my job. My job is what does it mean to earnings when you have these tax changes? Okay, Tony, let's just push aside the corporate tax here, and I, I hear what you're saying, but isn't the other side of this too, the Biden administration may raise taxes on individuals for those making 400,000 or more. So if I'm making that, if I'm making that amount, what is the portion of my stock in taxes? I mean, I'm trying to look at, if, if taxes do go up on individuals, I mean, is that more of a market impact than hiking the corporate tax? It could be, but that's not something that's in the proposal. So how can we react to it? You know, you can't create analysis off of a guess. Remember, remember um, when Trump took office, there was a, an idea that there was going to be a border adjustment tax and companies were spending millions and millions of dollars trying to figure out what it meant if they got a border adjustment tax hit. Well, guess what? It never got legislated. It never got passed. So the idea that you were going to change a portfolio or change an investment thesis around something that's a guess, again, I think, I think we're too famous for doing that on TV. It's a mistake to make people or to suggest that people change. Now, you could. And, and could it be right? Well, of course. But it's a guess. So are they going to raise taxes on individuals? It very well could happen. 
it's not that identifiable enough now to to enact some kind of decision making process. So Tony, finally, um, before we let you go, I, I guess the, the question I like to ask, you know, a lot of people that are sitting in your seat is, is this the primary concern that you are getting from your clients right now? Are they still hung up on rates? Are we talking about the economy? Because from our perspective in the media, it seems that higher taxes have been, you know, the main concern of the last two weeks. Is that so, given your vantage point? Well, I, I really think it makes the best and freshest news, right? It's in the news cycle every minute. I don't, from, from the clients that I talk to, it's much more about what do you do with the interest rate volatility, right? So if you've got the 10 year that's going to go up to 2% or what's the, it's always around the level or based on our earlier discussion um, prior to the opening, it's around what level will cause indigestion in the marketplace. It was, remember, it was going to be 1%, then it was one and a quarter, then it's one and a half, then it was 175. And in all of those, it didn't because it didn't really stifle um, uh, financial conditions. Financial conditions are terrific. And as long as that's the case, again, you don't have to chase the next tick. Like I, as I look at the market, we're, we're up pretty good over the last few days. Would I chase the next tick? I, I wouldn't. Would I aggressively attack weakness? Yeah, I would. There's a lot of money out there and we're in a V-shaped recovery, a capital V-shaped recovery. 